All right, y'all. So today's video or today's audio is going to be a ride along because I really wanted to talk about this and I just did not have time to sit down in front of the mic and uh, talk to you about my theory that I have. Now, before we get started, there are a couple of my subscribers that pointed out to me from my last video where I talked about Christine's ring and Robin's ring looking very similar. Someone pointed out that Robin already had her ring. I totally appreciate that, and, and yes, we do want to report true news here on this channel, but I'm going to go ahead and say that at some point during the time of them living together, um, Christine probably pointed out that that was her style, and Robin hurried up and got the same style before she could get it, because we don't like Robin. All right, anyway, let's jump into the theory of why I believe Robin is planning to leave Cody sooner than I think we might even believe. So let's go back in, into history and think about the book Becoming Sister Wives. I haven't read the book in a very long time, but I do remember the chapter about Robin and some things that stuck out to me. I'm sure that a few creators and YouTubers have pointed out that Robin in the book talks about how after her marriage to David, she did not care, and, and this was David Jessup, not David Woolley, because David Woolley would never have her. Um, after her marriage to David, she was looking for the next relationship to be one that took care of her and her children. She did not care about him being a handsome man. She didn't care about the romantic part of the relationship. What she cared about is what he could offer her, right? So she finds Cody. Now... Let's look at it from the perspective of why choose Cody because we've heard they didn't have a whole lot of money, blah, blah, blah. But just remember, Cody was married to Christine, who was basically church royalty, right? I think that it was probably talk throughout the church that this family was going to get a show on TLC, right? Because the church was not really happy with them doing this show. So, of course, if you have to go to the elders for other things, and I don't know if they're called elders, so please forgive me, um, you have to go to the heads of the church and ask about everything that you're going to do in your life as the, when you're in this faith. So why wouldn't you have to go to them to ask, hey, is this okay? We're thinking about doing this. Even though they got the answer that, you know, we're not really okay with it, of course, they did go ahead with it. I'm sure that there was talk throughout the church about this family getting a TV show. Because any of us who go to church know, if you want your business in the street, tell it to somebody at church. Child, there's always a deaconess. There's always a mother of the church. There's always an usher, an usher who is willing to tell your business, even if it's in a phone call to Sister So and So who ain't supposed to say nothing. So I'm sure that there was talk throughout their church about how this was going to happen. In walks Robin, who places herself at a dance where Robin and Mary are. Mary's like, hey, she's cute. I'm having a few troubles with my other sister wife. Maybe if I bring this sister wife in, we can be best buddies, and he can be happy because we're not really that happy. Blah, blah, blah. Robin says, okay, cool, this is going to work out. Now, I don't know if she really thought he was all that handsome. We've seen pictures of Cody in the time that they met. He wasn't really that great looking to me, but to each his own. What she saw was the dollar sign, not the blue, in his eyes. Okay, stay with me. So now let's jump forward into, also in the book, Robin talks about how Janelle offered for her to move in with Janelle when she was going to move from where she was to be closer to the family. She says that her tax return and some big sale that Cody's made allowed her to move into her own apartment closer to the family in Lehigh. She never had any intention of being close to these women. She was close to Cody for a purpose. These other women did not serve her, po her purpose. So let's jump a little bit further. Now we're into the family. Now we're into moving to Las Vegas. Separate houses. Still on a cul-de-sac, but I can, I can still look like I'm playing the part. But in the time that they were not on the cul-de-sac and they were pretty distant, she had time to worm her way in, make Cody her best customer. Her mother had taught her 
what she needed to do. I believe she talks about this. Her mother told her what she needed to do to make sure that she felt like she was the one in the precious position. She was the wife. Can't call yourself a number one wife. Make yourself a number one wife in his eyes. For her, this worked out much better than she planned. Because the number one wife in Cody's life on paper was starting to pull away. He had said he wasn't in love with Christine and Robin. He's now admitted that when he met Robin, he wept for months and months. Again, rewriting history, which brings me to the comment that she made about there's a lot of rewriting history that happens. You rewrite history too, Robin. Don't act like you don't. All right, so now we've got him separated in Las Vegas. We move to Flagstaff, right? I'm moving faster than I think the series is. Then, then the series is moving. They need to contact me. So we move to Flagstaff. We're still separate. It's still working out because none of the wives want to live in the big house. None of them really care about living close together. So now COVID hits. Now we have a valid reason to keep Cody separate from everyone else. She's got to ensure that she's got him on the hook because now is the time that we need to start planning, planning a possible escape because we see that there are problems with Christine. We know that he doesn't love Mary and he does say that in an upcoming episode that Robin knew where he stood with Mary, right? So now we got to start planning. So here are the excuses that she's going to use. My kids, have diseases or conditions that can't allow anyone with COVID or a cold to be around. You've got to stay separate. He can't be away from the younger kids more than three days or they start asking for him. So you've got to stay separate, right? We know all the excuses. I don't have to go through all of them. Cody buys into it because remember, he's her best customer. She has treated him like the king that he wants to be recognized as. And so that makes him being in her house from Las Vegas on easy and what he wants to do. She's got him on the hook. We bought this land. Cody and Robin have that pillow talk that lets Robin in on things that the other wives don't know about, like how the property is going to be split, okay? Go with me on another jump, okay? So you, hopefully you see where I'm going. Separate, separate, separate. Isolate, isolate, isolate. Get your hooks in. Do what your mother taught you to do. Make him your best customer so that when these marriages fall apart, because you have to be deaf, dumb, and blind to not see that at some point, these women, other than yourself, are probably going to leave him. Remember, when Christine had the talk about moving back to Utah, she walked away from the group and said, I can't do marriage with Cody. At that point, Mary was still hanging on. But remember, Robin knows that Cody doesn't see it for him and Mary. So she knows one down, possibly two down. I can let her stay around, but she's not going to be in a relationship that Cody's going to share things with her. She didn't quite see Janelle coming, but figured that because Robin or because Christine and Janelle were so close, when one goes, the other one may shortly follow. You with me? You with me? So now we're all the way to the finale episode of season 18 where Cody, or where Robin makes a joke to Cody and says, well, here's how I see splitting the property. So you thought about it. She says, well, you know, if I were to ever leave Cody, <laughs> that's just a joke. That's just a joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Out of the, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Sometimes jokes are reality behind the laugh. Cody, I think he may catch it, right? So she's given us a hint. Then we see her sitting on the bench crying about how she didn't get the sister wives experience that she wanted, sitting on the porch, watching the grandchildren. So see how she's planted it? You didn't give me the experience. I've thought about where that land is going to go, which is to my children. So the math is I'm going to give four acres to my children, Probably two acres if Cody splits, because now we're legally married. I have rights to that land. I have rights to a whole house, a whole sale of a house, 
half of those sales. I have about six acres of land possibly coming. I also have the child support that you're going to have to pay for at least two of my children, depending on when I leave. So she's got the excuses, right? I didn't get the sister wives experience that I wanted and that you promised me. Okay, now she's saying that he's picking fights with her in an upcoming episode of the tell-all. He tries to destroy our marriage by picking fights with me. So she's got it planned out. You know, she has said a few things that really are going to make it easy. If you listen to her, she's given us all the clues. We just need to pay attention. We just need to pick up what Robin is putting down. Man, if that woman ain't a sneaky snake. And when the grass is cut, the snakes will show. All right, y'all. You roll along to me. That's all I got for now. Please forgive the sound as I'm in the car. But we'll get back to the mic before Sunday. We might get back to the mic before Sunday, all right? So, see you later. Peace, love, and hair grease. We out.